Hey guys, it's Archon. Welcome to Torment Tuesday, or Wednesday. I don't want to talk about it. I've got an exciting video for you guys today. This might be the most exciting week since the launch of Reaper of Souls because, of course, we got the 2.1 patch preview. This is what's coming out in the first content patch of Reaper of Souls, and it looks pretty awesome. As far as content patches goes, I think this is the one players are the most excited about. Of course, the big thing's coming out. They've already announced Seasons and Greater Rifts. They give us a little bit more details on those. I'm just going to go through these really quickly, try to point out things that are new. Uh, but, of course, there's links to everything I'm talking about in the description below. There's just a lot to talk about, so I'm going to try to get through it quickly. Seasons, of course, are like ladders from D2. Basically, you can re-roll on a new server that reset every, I don't know, three months, six months, whatever they decide to do. I don't think they've announced that yet. But you're just kind of racing against everyone who decides to roll on seasons, see how high you can get. And they're adding some really cool stuff that you can see on the leaderboards to see where you rank amongst your peers. And one of those is conquests. These seem super cool. They're season-specific achievements to do really hard stuff. I guess some of them will be easier, some will be harder, but they'll be on the leaderboard. So uh, some examples they give here was killing Mothail at level 70 on Torment 6, or finishing Acts 1 through 5 in an hour or less. There's going to be hard things for you to do, and the first 1,000 people to do them on each season will be immortalized on that season's regional leaderboard. So basically, it's just prestige. It's just, hey, look it, I was one of the first thousand people to do that. Or for those really hardcore people, I was the first person to do that. So I thought that was a really cool idea. I like the idea of ranking players on a lot of different levels on seasons so that you don't feel like... I mean, everyone feels like a loser if it's just one thing you're being ranked off of, right? Adding a bunch of conquests and some other stuff I'm going to talk about here gives players uh, a variety of choices for what they can go after. So any player could be in the top 10% of, um, of one conquest or whatever they want to go for. And I like that idea. I think leaderboards and seasons are going to be really cool. Uh, they also talk about if you don't want to play seasons, don't worry about it. And uh, one thing they're doing that I'm not sure how I feel about is... They're going to have specific legendaries in seasons that you can only get if you're playing on the season. But then after the season ends, they're adding that to the loot pool. So then all the normal players can also find the item. So even if you don't play seasons, you can get all the season legendaries. You just have to wait until the season's over. I'm not sure I like that. Being someone who's going to play seasons, I like the idea that, oh, you had to go play the season to get this item, and now I have it forever, and that's the only way you could have gotten it. That seems way more epic to me, but I get it. Most players are casual. They feel like they're being punished in some way if they can't get their super awesome item on normal mode and they don't want to feel pushed into seasons. So I understand why they did it, but it would have been cool if seasons were the only way you could get those items. Greater Rifts, of course, they've talked about this, but they announced some more cool stuff about it. Basically, when you complete a regular Nephilim Rift, there's a chance to get a Greater Rift token, and then that gives you a harder Rift to do. And if you beat that, then you get another token, and you can keep going up. If you beat them fast enough, you can even skip some, and you're just trying to get to the hardest Rift you can. Um, the furthest tier you can, and then you're trying to get the fastest clear time on that tier. They'll be a lot like the current Nephilim Rifts are now, except for you'll have a clock that you're racing against. Monsters won't drop loot, so you don't have to decide if you want to spend time picking up loot or not. But the Guardian at the end of the Rift will just drop a lot more loot with a higher chance of legendaries and whatnot. Um, your progress bar will fill up more for like elite packs than they would for little white mobs. That, that change is actually also going into regular Nephilim Rifts as well. Uh, when you res, you have to res from the last checkpoint. Uh, you can't use banners or the teleport option on other players. And uh, of course, they get progressively more difficult as you go. Um, and it has some screenshots here you can look at if you want to use the link below. And maybe one of the most exciting things that they've announced about these Rifts are Legendary Gems. They haven't told us much about these, and they've said that they're not going to be in the initial 2.1 PTR, but these are gems that you can get and upgrade through rifts, and it's infinite upgrades. It goes on forever. Marvel Heroes has done this, from what I understand, and it looks like a pretty cool idea. I guess Paragon is another example of an infinitely upgradable system, but uh, infinitely upgradable is a great way to add endgame content, because everything ends unless it's infinite. And so if it's not infinite, they have to keep creating new content. This way, your gems can just keep getting better and better. You play as much as you want. Your character's always getting better. I love that. I think that's super cool. They can only be socketed into rings or amulets. We don't know what they look like, but from doing rifts, your gems will get better and better. You upgrade your gems by playing, kind of like the gems in Path of Exile. 
Here goes Diablo again, just ripping off ideas from Path of Exile. Can't come up with their own ideas. What? Excuse me? Blizzard came up with the entire genre? They just... Moving on, after that, they talk a bit about leaderboards, and it looks like the leaderboards are going to be pretty awesome. They're going to have different leaderboards for different things. If you want to track conquest, or just achievements, or greater rift progress, and it's going to be based on hardcore or softcore, season, non seeder so a ton of different leaderboards, and I think that's good. I think the more leaderboards, the better, because it's the higher the chance that you're going to be at the top of one of them, right? There's not as much competition on each leaderboard because they're really spreading out the progress. I think they're doing this really well. They have a screenshot here of an example of what it might look like. You can see uh, the top people here got to tier 47. Who knows how hard that's going to be? Shows their time there, and they're on two players right now. So you can look at the one player progress, two player progress, three or four, uh, when you're looking at greater rifts, of course. And uh, so that gives you the option if you want to do team play or just solo, you can still uh, compete with other players. Uh, they're making some pretty big combat changes here. Now let's get through these quickly, but they're completely getting rid of dodge from dexterity. Dexterity is no longer giving dodge, it's now giving armor, which I have to say feels like a really lazy fix. Um, but I know they've been working with this for a while, so maybe there just wasn't a better fix. And I think a lot of people are going to like it. Because dodge, although it does give you some survivability, it's not consistent survivability. You can't rely on it to keep you alive because some things can't be dodged and you might get a, a streak of bad luck. Um, and armor is just much more reliable. I think most demon hunters and monks will be very excited about this change. It'll make it a lot easier to balance things. And uh, there's a few other changes that'll make it easier as well. But... It's kind of lazy, right? Uh, just make it do armor. Fixed it. Um, but I, I do think that it'll improve the game. Healing is also getting a change. Um, a lot of people are upset about this change, and I don't really get it. I, I think it's for the better. Um, basically, they felt like health globes were giving too much of your healing. They wanted more of your healing to come from your gear, uh, especially because in the higher tiered rifts, the greater rifts, that you need the healing on your gear more. You need to rely on it more. And so they're buffing life on hit and life regen, and they're nerfing the amount of healing from health globes. There'll still be just as many health globes on the ground, they just won't heal you as much, and your gear will be more worth it. Now, some people are pissed off because they're like, what? I'm not going to put life on hit on my gear instead of crit chance or something. It's like, well, right now you wouldn't. And that's the problem, which is why there needs to be a solution. So the ideal situation, of course, in itemization is that all stats are equally valuable. And you get a wide array of things to choose from to personalize your character. So it's not the same as everyone else's. Um, so I hope people look this is a good thing. And I think we could admit that healing on your character really doesn't do that much unless you stack a ton of it. Uh, now you don't stack, have to stack as much for it to be efficient. Uh, cesspools they talk about here, it's just a new template in Nephilim Rifts. You can now go into the cesspools or like the sewers on Nephilim Rifts. Nothing too big there. And that was pretty much it they had for 2.1. It looks like it's going to be pretty awesome. I think we're getting the PTR any day now. I'm going to be playing on there, checking out seasons, and then I think I'm going to play a lot once 2.1 comes out. I might even try to stream, you know, just stream until my computer crashes, and, and, and that'll be what it is. Uh, we also got some other blue posts here. Upcoming changes to one with everything. This is the passive that has caused more controversy than any other passive in the game. If you guys don't know about it, it's a monk passive that makes it so that your highest resistance is applied to all your resistances. And what it means is, one, most monks feel like they have to use it. And two, it makes you gear up completely different than any other class would in a really weird way because you just have to focus on one resistant. Now, less less monks are using it now than used to from my understanding. However, I haven't played a monk yet in Reaper Souls. But it's still causing a big issue, and so they've come up with a solution. And... Uh, people aren't going to like it. Monks that have geared for one with everything are going to be weaker after this. However, I've racked my own brain trying to come up with any way to fix it, and I can't. Uh, for those of you who think, hey, it's not a problem, just leave it, well, the more variety in passives, the better. Right now, people feel pushed into it, and it's just not fun to gear this way for most, most players. I'm sure some players do, but what they're doing is making it uh, so there's a new passive called Harmony, which replaces one with everything, which allows 30% of your single elemental resistances from items to apply to all elements. Basically, it just gives you a little bit of a buff for using single resistance on your gear. So what it does is it, it's kind of like a compensation package to people who have already geared in one resistance. It's like, hey, 
you still get to keep 30% of that. Way to go. And uh, it's not going to feel good for monks, but it's. I think it's a good negotiation. It, they had to get rid of it. It was just ruining monk itemization. And so I'm happy about that. Um, of course, they're also getting um, armor instead of dodge from dexterity. And they kind of also said, hey, that'll supplement your toughness there. You're going to get some... You can get some armor, but but demon hunters and monks are all getting that, so I don't know if that's a good uh, argument for that. But also, another change, preparation. There's a rune on preparation called punishment, which allows you to turn discipline into hatred, which really allows you to completely dismantle the entire resource system of the demon hunter. The resource system of the demon hunter is designed so that there's a split between utility defense skills and offensive skills. This is how much damage you can do, this is how much defense and utility you have, and you can't mix the two. And so demon hunters don't feel like they're punished when they do a tumble, because they didn't do that instead of doing some damage, they just had the discipline and couldn't do damage with it. But punishment allows you to turn the discipline into hatred, and now, suddenly, if you're using this rune on your build, you're being punished every time you spend discipline, because that could have been some extra damage. And it really just completely destroys the whole theory around the demon hunter, and that's causing some issues. Now, a lot of players are going to be upset about this change, but you no longer will be able to turn discipline into hatred. Instead, it's just going to be a 20-second cooldown on punishment. Every 20 seconds, boom, you can get some extra hatred. So, Punishment will still be an offensive rune on preparation. They argue that it's still going to be pretty much as good. You just won't lose that discipline. For most players, it takes about 20 seconds, they say, for you to get enough discipline to use it. Uh, I know a lot of players are going to be upset about this, though, because some people are going to lose some damage. Of course, you'll gain some utility and defense from having more discipline available, but a lot of players just care about the deeps, and uh, they're not going to like this. But overall, I think it's going to make the Demon Hunter a lot more fun to play, uh, and Punishment should still be pretty usable, but uh, we'll just have to wait and see in 2.1. Also, we got some data mine stuff. I'm not going to go through it, but if you want to look at it, it's pretty cool. It basically shows you the chance that you're going to be able to enchant a certain affix onto your gear. The data mines some info from the server which shows how much weight is applied to each stat. And then they show you how you can do some math to figure out if you're replacing this stat into that stat with these other stats on the item, what's the chance you're going to get it. And this might help you decide is it worth it to spend a few more souls to try to get that socket or crit chance, whatever else you're trying to get. Um, it's a little complicated, but if you read through it, I think they do a good job of laying it out, and there's a link to that below. Also on Diablo fans, I thought this was cool. People were just coming up with ideas for legendary gems and posting them on here. Uh, some of them I thought were pretty cool. What I was thinking would be uh, best for legendary gems is if they gave you a bonus in one area, but then they decrease something in another area. So that they don't become so overpowered that you need a socket every piece of jewelry. Um, and because they have unlimited progression, I think that's just a good way to do it. It's just more of a specialization than a huge surge of power, I think would be a good way to do it. And it gives you a little bit more customization over to your character and how it plays versus other characters of the same class. Um, but they haven't showed us any legendary gems yet. And of course, probably won't be there right in the PTR right away. Um, but here we can see uh, Hellfire's Twilight, a player made idea for a legendary gem. Enemies feared by you deal 15% reduced damage and you deal 25% more damage to feared enemies. Most of these, if you want to read through them, are kind of like that. They only give you bonuses. But the one I thought was really cool, if I can find it, um, right here. Uh, Homing Fury increases your damage by 100% and removes the ability to land critical hits. I like that one because you're losing something. It's more of a specialization than just an all-around buff. A lot of people wouldn't want that rune, while other people might love gearing around it. I don't know how it would scale as it upgraded through Greater Rifts, um, but I like the idea of sacrificing something to gain something else and really using these gems to specialize characters, and I can't wait to see what gems they put into the game. I think it's going to be really cool. Grimaku made this blue post in response to a player who was saying, hey, why can't we automatically pick up gems in crafting materials and stuff? And Grimaku was pretty much like, no, yeah, you, we're doing that. 
Grimuku quoted a post that was made months ago about how they want to make it so you can automatically pick up certain things, maybe gems or crafting materials, just by walking over them. And also an idea that crafting materials and gems wouldn't be stored in your stash or inventory, but would rather be like currency, like gold. It would just be a number at the bottom of your inventory screen. And Grimuku said, we're not doing that yet, but the auto pickup on gems and crafting materials looks like it might be going in on 2.1. And that just make life a little bit easier for all of us. So that's pretty cool, and I hope they do the currency thing soon as well. Uh, before I wrap up this video, I just wanted to end with the Archon Recommend section. I thought this was super cool. Someone made some Diablo-themed Hearthstone cards. Actually, quite a bit of them, and you can read through them. I already did. They're pretty cool. Uh, some of them seem more balanced than others, but they all seem really awesome. And I, I think a lot of us who play Hearthstone and other Blizzard games would love to see a Diablo version of Hearthstone, or, or even just like a Diablo class, just added, or, or a StarCraft version. Um, but yeah, they're really cool if you want to check those out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that subscribe button, and I'll have another one for you soon.